glad you're watching. And uh, if you haven't hit the like and uh, subscribe button lately, <laughs> please do it now. It helps me out. But uh, we're going to talk today about my tandem trike uh, lessons, where I've given an introductory lesson on the tandem trike. You know, I was trained for the tandem and certified for that uh, earlier this year. And so that's been a lot of fun. I have a Fly Products uh, Flash Cruiser, and I have it made it up with a uh, Rider Thrust with a Moster 185 on it. And those are great products. But the engine size limits me. Now, I know Tucker's just recently made a video about upgrading to the Pliny 303, and I thought about that. But I also wanted something else, and that is I wanted disc brakes. And I found a used paramotor that had the disc brakes and also has 38 horsepower of uh, thrust like the Pelini 303. Only this is a different engine. It's an engine that's used uh, a great deal on other ultralight uh, aircraft. And so it's been mated up with this uh, power to fly trike, which has disc brakes. And it's sold by a, the, the engine is sold by a company out of Wisconsin known as Jaybird. And so I'll have uh, 38 horsepower uh, thrust and I'll also have the disc brakes and I'll get it all for around $10,000 used. It's got 20 hours on it, so it's nearly new. And I trust the fellow that I'm buying it from. Well, we'll see if it works out. I think it's gonna be good. My, uh, my hope is that it is. It's kind of a flashy looking trike. It's a lot of chrome on it. Uh, and so that looks pretty cool. So we're on the drive. We're gonna get there late tonight. And then early in the morning, I'm gonna go over to the fella's place and I'm gonna take a look at it. So let's go over there right now. All right, so I'm at Rick Spittler's house here in Wichita, Kansas, and I'm gonna swing around. This is Rick. Say hi, Rick. Hello, Rick. All right, we've already <laughs> loaded up the trike. It's in there. And so we'll take a look at that when I get back home and uh, see how it flies and see how, how we like it. But it was a good looking machine and he's taken really good care of it. Showed me a few things about it and uh, not nearly enough for me, but I'll learn. I need your shades. All right, so <laughs> we'll see you in a, in a moment when we unbox it. All right, there it is. This is the new trike that I just brought home today from Kansas. And it is power to fly. It's a beautiful machine. Got some chrome on it, got a big engine on the back. It has uh, disc brakes here that you can see a little bit in the front. They're not big brakes, but they are brakes, a little bit of brake for you, so you don't have to put your foot down. And uh, it's got a five gallon gas tank. You sit higher uh, up off the ground in this one than you do in the other. You can kind of see it in the background back there on the left. But uh, this has a 440 Kawasaki engine. This is an older engine. They were developed in the 80s for snowmobiles and uh, they've been retrofitted and become very popular in the ultralight community. Uh, this has electric start, it's got lithium battery down there and it's got uh, strobe lights. You can see those strobe lights when they get out of the sun. It's a pretty engine, just a good looking, good looking setup here. I like it. And uh, yeah, it's got good bright strobes. As you can see there. Tomorrow will probably be the first day that I'll have an opportunity to fly it. Tomorrow morning looks real good. Tomorrow evening looks good. And uh, I can't wait. So it's a bigger machine. I'll be using the Triox 38, uh, the Ozone Triox 38 on this. So I just arrived at the airport over here in Wetumpka and we're getting ready. I'm getting ready to go out for a flight. The air looks good. We'll see uh, how it works out. So that's that's uh, the field. The problem with the field is this grass. It hasn't been cut in a long time. And uh, I think that they don't have a contract to cut it until the new year. So we're gonna power across that and hopefully everything will be fine. I've done it before with a smaller engine, should be easy with a bigger one, but it's no fun to drive through it. I've got my wing out and I've got to set it up. Thing is, I'm a little bit early. 
And so I'm gonna be back at it uh, in about 30 minutes or so. All right, so the air looks pretty good. I've got the wing set up, the engine's running. I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna take off. So I've set up this entire video to present on YouTube and I've talked all along uh, in these video clips but at the moment I take off I've got a lot on my mind and I didn't have the presence of mind to talk through it. Uh, so that grass was thick but the engine was powerful and the wing is so large there was nothing going to keep us on the ground. So I get into the air and I immediately notice that my brake and my throttle are kind of twisted together and so I'm trying to fix this but I'm accidentally hitting the kill switch. So uh, I finally get it straightened out, but uh, that was interesting uh, experience to start out with. So I get it straightened out and I head on uh, off the end of the flight. And so now we're gonna cut to where I'm actually speaking from the air. It feels like a more stable ride than uh, my flash cruiser, but I enjoyed the flash cruiser as well. So it would have to feel a little more st stable, I suppose, because it's a good deal heavier. The engine definitely sounds quieter. Yeah, I definitely like this. I definitely like this. It took right up into the air. Of course, my, my flash cruiser did too, again, uh, with my smaller wing when I was uh, alone on it. This one I have to run the tandem triox even when I'm riding alone because it's so much heavier. So now we just have to land the baby. Tell you what, I it's a lot easier on the arms. The, uh, and that could be because I'm not carrying anybody, but it seemed like it was a hard pull with the, uh, with the flash cruiser. It's the same wing, it's the same wing. But I'm kind of relaxing my arms here and I'm not pulling at all. That's kind of nice. We can certainly see where the wind's coming from. The smoke is blowing straight in the same direction I'm going. I was thinking that that, that uh, road might be a place to land if I needed to, but it looks like it has wires on it. So I'm just, I'm just kind of floating over this way to get on the other side of the airport. The wind is moving a lot quicker than I expected. I kind of almost expected dead air today, but I didn't get it. Montgomery straight ahead. Using the engine to turn myself, giving myself a little bit of gas and turning. There are so few airplanes that come into Wetumpka. I think I saw two take off today in a little over an hour. So the engine started right up for me. So that trip out to Kansas was something else. I got in the car, the truck at uh, seven o'clock in the morning and I drove to 11 o'clock at night. I was about 20 minutes from his house. Rick Spittler was the fellow who sold it to me. He actually runs a paramotor school out there and uh, is an importer for his area for fly products, which is what this strike is. And uh, he was very helpful gave me a bunch of oil to go with it that was recommended by the uh, engine manufacturers for running in it and uh, I think he gave me a good price a very good price on a nice machine as long as it stays running I'm going to be very happy now 
Alex Montanez, I think is his last name, is down in Florida, and he works on paramotors for folks. He's an airframes and power plants licensed mechanic. And I, I worked around with him for about three weeks, and I think he's really good. He's got great common sense and uh, knows how to make these things work. He can do anything aviation, so if you ever need anything and you're in the Lake Wales Airport area, if you want him to check something out for you, that, that would be the guy to go to, Alex Montanez. So these bars, you see what I'm doing here? I don't know if you can see it. Just pull down and clip my thumb under there, and then I don't have to. I don't have to pull. I was up pretty quick, uh, faster than I thought I would be, and I zoomed right up in the air. So I might be able to take off over at uh, the uh, field beside Overlook Park, as opposed to coming all the way over here. Certainly when I'm flying alone, I could in this. It sun wants to sit on me. Take a look at what time it is. 4.30, sets at 20, 15 minutes. I might just swing around while I've got plenty of light and uh, land and looked over the engine after the first flight. Yeah, that smoke's telling me what way the wind's blowing. I don't need a wind sock. I think I'm going to land. Well, I can land anywhere and then drive back. I think I'd like to do that. I'd like to land out here where I've got good grass. Okay, engine is running at 2,100 RPMs, and I'm not giving it any gas. Part of that's because the uh, air is running through those propellers. On the ground, it was 1,900. Hoping this isn't very high grass out here. Can't really tell very well from the air. There we go. That was pretty, pretty simple. Which way is it going to go down? It's going to go down straight. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, well, that was a great flight. It was an easy flight. It was an enjoyable flight. And uh, so I'm happy. I'm real happy. And I think that uh, I made a good purchase. All I've got to do is pack that wing up. And I'm ready to go. So, I hope you enjoyed flying with me today on my brand new trike. There she is. Uh, because I certainly did. And all the best to you and God bless. Bye-bye.